Hey everybody and welcome to Facebook Live. I'm Grant. This is Jeanette. Hi. Sorry. <laughs> Who know what I was saying for a second. <laughs> and we are live in the Rachel Ray Show Prep Kitchen. Um, and today we're talking summer sides because we're halfway through the summer. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm getting a little sick of just plain old potato yeah, salad or plain old pasta salad. So today we're going to um, show you a twist on some of our favorite um, summer sides. And you might notice that I am holding a giant watermelon right here. And I'm standing next to the watermelon carving queen. <laughs> so today Jeanette is going to show us one of her... Um, watermelon carvings and she's going to do it live start to finish right before your eyes yes, Jeanette is going to turn this watermelon into what a shark which is um, my very first watermelon carving I ever did on the show and the most successful on our website so we know that you guys love it and if you're new to the watermelon shark um, I hope you enjoy it and yeah. stay tuned and watch because we're gonna um, we're gonna you're gonna see that thing turn into a sea creature in just mere moments yeah that'll be fun um, but right now you're working on something else right? I am yeah so we were talking about um, summer sides and um, how are you guys doing with your summer sides this summer? You know, it's uh, we're right in the middle of July, and um, it's a uh, it's 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 that time of year where I'm like, all right, enough with the coleslaw, enough with the potato salad. How can we doll things up? What's your go-to summer side? Do you, when you when you're bringing um, sides to people uh, for barbecues or parties, what do you guys like to bring? Um, we'd love to hear from you. You're gonna see some of our recipes that are definitely really? some of our go-tos today. Do you have a favorite summer side? Um, my summer, my favorite summer side is potato salad, okay. which I'm making right here. Potato cool. salad. Is just potatoes in general are like one of my favorite foods. Yeah. Um, they're just any form, baked, fried, all of them. <laughs> um, so I love potato salad, and I always, um, you know, I always reach for that. But so this version of it, I'm not going to call it a little bit lightened up. I think I just I cut the mayonnaise in half, so I do equal parts um, mayo, Greek yogurt, and apple cider vinegar, which is yeah. probably the same was the same base as my uh, coleslaw I made a few weeks back. Yeah. And um, all I do is um, so I like the Greek yogurt. It adds a little bit more protein. It adds a little. Um, you know, just a little bit more thickness so it doesn't get very watery. Nice and creamy, yeah. too. Um, Nicole from Las Vegas is watching Hi, today. Hello, Nicole. Thanks for watching. Let Thank us you know what your favorite summer side is. Um, uh, hopefully we're making it today because I yeah. think we're going to address all of them. We have four summer We've sides, got right? four, yeah. And all then we're four. also going to make probably one of our favorite sides, which is the cocktail. We're going to make one of those as well. <laughs> we thought that's a side, right? It's Thursday. <laughs> Happy Thursday, guys. Um, so I just seasoned it with a little salt and pepper, a little tablespoon of Dijon. Can I grab this egg? Oh, sure. Oh, thank you. Um, so, and I'm going to just do a little dollop of hot sauce, any hot sauce that you like. I'm into sriracha these days. Yeah, I totally. love sriracha. Sriracha is great. And you can mm. find it in every single supermarket. No, I can. remember when it, people first started talking about it, it was kind of hard to find. You're right. You can find it everywhere. You're right. Um, Nicole commented and said her favorite summer side is pasta salad. Oh. Um, I'm actually going to make a pasta salad, um, today. You are um, in luck, Nicole, because yeah. I've been eating his pasta salad all morning. <laughs> <laughs> I just keep, I know it's his done one, but I just keep grabbing little, uh, fingerfuls of it. It's delicious. Um, Kim said her favorite summer side is tuna Ooh, salad I like, yummy. I like tuna in my pasta salad that's one oh, of my yeah. favorites yum um, and hi to Gloria from Puerto Rico. Hello, Gloria. hello. Um, this is um, actually we always laugh about these. This is a celery leaf. Um, yeah. I, I added um, one small red onion and um, two ribs of celery. But in the kitchen, it's kind of an inside joke with us and Rachel that um, Rachel's all about the leafy tops. Whenever she orders uh, celery, she's always like, get extra leafy tops. And so this season, it's funny. The produce is so fresh, and there's extra leafy tops at the grocery store yeah. on the celery. And there's so much flavor in those, so totally. I always add those to my. It's um, like adding a well. fresh herb to something, but it's you know exactly. comes from. Um, celery. It's like a bonus ingredient when you buy celery. Mm, I know, it's so good. Do you mind grabbing my potatoes? Oh, sure. So um, right before this, I actually just boiled up. Um, you can use any potatoes that you'd like. I like to use red potatoes. I think that the skin gives it a nice color, the red skin. Um, so right you can, here? yeah, right in here. So I just like to dump them in warm so that the, you know, it really kind of incorporates in the dressing. And that's it, you know? It, it comes together so quickly and it's so easy to oh, make. Yeah. I'm gonna add another big handful of chives just because I love chives. And I love um, chives too. I think yeah. chives are, for some reason, it's like a very summery herb to it me. It is, yeah. Um, and I throw it in pretty much everything. My mm. parents used to grow, or still do grow chives in their backyard. And I think that's maybe why it tastes like summer to me. Love it. They're fresh in the summertime. Um, Jennifer commented and said that she likes grilled corn on the cob as a summer One side. of my faves too. Yeah, that's yummy. So, so good. Um, so this is what it looks like after, um, you pop this in the refrigerator, um, overnight. You could definitely make it probably two to three days in advance. I can't see why you can't. Um, the longer it's in there, the better it gets. So you see how like nice and thick and yeah. creamy that got. That's I'm going to attest a lot of that to the Greek yogurt. You know, not yeah. love mayonnaise based salads, but the Greek yogurt definitely just kind of gives it a little it bit more texture. Else, yeah. It does. It gives it a little something else. I think the great, uh, great thing about all these summer sides that we're making today is they're all make ahead. So you can they make are. these a day or two ahead. 
Um, and I think with a lot of summer time or summer sides, the longer they sit in the fridge, the better they get. Agreed. Like the potato salad, the longer it sits, it's going to soak up all that yummy flavor Agreed. from the dressing. Totally. Um, when I was thinking about what kind of sides we wanted to make today, I thought about how potato salad isn't really a salad at all. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, if you've um, seen some of my recipes, I'm often looking for ways to um, eat more of the foods that I like without having to, um, you know, not be able to wear my bathing suit this weekend. So um, what I did to this, my right before I'm about to serve it, I like to just toss in a lot of fresh arugula. And then it makes a real potato salad, oh, which is why it's called potato salad salad. Potato salad salad. <laughs> I love that. That's exactly, fun. Exactly. Exactly. So nice this, and fresh, too. Yeah, I looks think so. Beautiful. It looks pretty, right? Um, we're going to we'll give this a little taste later. Yummy. Um, Jacqueline commented and said that she likes broccoli sunflower salad. Ooh, Jacqueline, Ooh. can you post that recipe? Yeah, that sounds yummy. Really yummy. I love sunflower seeds. Yeah, me too. Um, all right. Is it time? Are we ready? Is it Are time? Are you guys ready? <laughs> Jeanette's going to carve this watermelon live and turn it into a shark. Fingers crossed. This is going to happen. Yeah. I'm pretty excited. Exactly. Um, so the next salad we were tackling is um, fruit salad. And when we were thinking about fruit salad, I thought fruit salad's pretty perfect just the way yeah. it is. So um, why not change up the way that you serve it? Mm -hmm. So I thought we've got, you know, it is Thursday. It's a little bit of a throwback Thursday for us. Totally. Because this is one of the, the very, very first watermelon I ever carved on the show. Um, Look how and beautiful that watermelon yeah, they're is. They're so too. good this time of year. So, um, oh, your timer's going on oh, for your pasta. pasta. Yeah. Right so um, I'm going to let you, so the first way to turn this into a shark is um, you just get, this is a seedless watermelon, you can get a regular watermelon, um, and what you do is you just kind of hack off the bottom, I'm going to say like quarter, on a diagonal, and then you're going to flip it up this way, and it already starts to look like a shark jumping out of the water. So um, that's the first step. Then you're going to reserve this for um, the dorsal fin. I'm going to show you how to cut that a little bit later. Now you're going to just cut um, right into the top, and then you're making its big wide mouth. Um, and we are going to fill his big wide mouth with fruit salad. Um, Jika commented and said when you're carving the watermelon, how do you know that you're cutting it right? Um, I, you know, there is no rules in watermelon carving, Jika. <laughs> <laughs> we like to say that, you know, I've carved about five or six watermelons on the show, and we like to joke that the, uh, I didn't find the game, the game found me. Yeah. And, um, I, you know, I don't, I never knew I was good at this until I, uh, had a Shark Week party a few years back. And I made one of these as a centerpiece, and then the rest was history. Yeah. So, you And know. I think, you know, as I watch you do this, because um, I have been watching Jeanette carve watermelons for years now, <laughs> <laughs> um, like you just did here, you took off one small piece, because you don't want to take off too much, and now you're cutting off smaller pieces to make yes. it the right size, which yes. I think is really smart, because that way you're not, you know, cutting off too much. You're okay. cutting off as little as possible, little, and then kind of Little bits. Little bits at a time. There. Exactly. So here's his mouth. All um, nice and wide and ready to eat. Michelle, we have a lot of people writing in telling us their favorite summer sizes. Oh, great, sizes. yeah. Um, what we asked size. you guys earlier, so keep writing in because it's fun to hear what you guys like. Um, Michelle said that she likes grilled jalapenos with cream cheese uh, wrapped in bacon. Whoa. Yummy. I love that. That sounds good. Um, and Anna from Portland is watching. Hey, Hi, Anna. Anna. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now the next step. I mean, it's starting to look fierce already, right? What do you guys think? I think it looks pretty fierce. Our all right, That's so a fierce I, watermelon. Fierce watermelon. <laughs> um, so the next step is I'm going to take a metal spoon, and I actually find that that's easier. You can use a plastic spoon as well, and I'm just going to start scooping out the uh, inside, and definitely save this. Actually, I was practicing yesterday, and I saved the inside of our watermelon yep. to make watermelon margaritas on Monday or Tuesday next week. Okay. So make sure to come back for those. And whenever Jeanette carves one of these melons for the show, we always just have a giant bowl of melon scraps sitting in the Always. middle of the counter and we just snack on it all day long. So good. It's so oh. much fun. It's really one of my favorite, um, favorite foods. So you're going to keep doing that. I'm going to get started on my one of my summer sides. Yes. Um, I'm working on coleslaw, which is one of my favorite summertime oh, mine sides. Mine too. Um, but I am making it um, a different version. I'm going to make sort of an Asian coleslaw mm. and I'm going to use ramen noodles. Ooh. That's right. This is a ramen noodle coleslaw. Um, I recently went to Montana and went to this really cool place called Warden's Deli, and they make a um, chicken, it's a coleslaw chicken salad. They could serve it as like a meal almost, but I'm making mine as a side today. Mm. But basically it's, you know, shredded cabbage with like an Asian dressing on top and some ramen noodles. Um, so you just put the ramen noodles into a bag, smash them up, not too fine, you still want big chunks of them, but you just want to break them up a little bit. Um, and then to that we're going to add in a little bit of toasted sesame oil. Just about a tablespoon, nice. a cup of sliced almonds, 
And then one packet of that ramen noodle flavor. Yes, I, know, I right? love that. Because that's what's going to make it really taste like a ramen noodle. And these are like the ramen noodles that you used to eat in college, the ones they sell at the dollar store. Yes. This, I, the other reason I love this dish is because it's basically ramen noodles and cabbage. Like you couldn't get any more inexpensive, so inexpensive. than that, right? Yeah. So you put everything into a bag and shake it up. You just want to make sure it all gets nice and coated. And then you pop it onto a baking sheet. Courtney and Maria commented, Courtney makes buffalo chicken dip as a good summer side, and Maria makes mixed grilled veggies and Greek salad. Ooh, thanks for watching, guys, and thanks yeah, for writing in. Those all sound good. really, really good. I love buffalo chicken dip. So then you pop it into the oven and you let it toast. Um, you just wanted to get it nice and golden brown. Now, I could eat it just like this. It's mm. almost like Chex Mix, been. right? I know, right? Sorry. It's really snacky. Um, today. It's yummy. It's very like crunchy, salty, tastes just like ramen. It's a little nutty too. Um, so now what we're going to do is make the dressing to go on top of our salad. So I'm going to put in about a third of a cup of rice wine vinegar. You could use like lemon juice, you could use apple cider vinegar, but I like rice wine vinegar because it, you know, tastes like I love rice Asian vinegar. to me. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to put in two tablespoons of soy sauce. That makes it nice and salty. Some ground ginger. You could use fresh if, if you'd like, but I like the ground stuff because I feel right. like it, you know, the flavor really just kind of. And I always have it in my spice cabinet. I don't always have a hand of ginger in the yeah, fridge. Yeah, totally. I like that. Yeah. Um, a little more of the toasted sesame oil because I just love that flavor in here. And then a bunch of canola oil. Mm -hmm. Now, this looks like a lot of dressing, but we're going to mix it with a lot of coleslaw. And it sort of like wilts down as it sits in the fridge because it sits in there overnight. And it wilts down a little bit, so it, it doesn't end up being like a ton of coleslaw. It's the perfect amount. Um, all right, so that's done. Let me go grab a bowl. I'm going to say hi to Christina. She commented in from St. Paul. Hi, Christina. Thanks Hello, for watching. Christina. And hi to Linda from Florida. Christina and Linda. Thanks for writing in. Thanks for watching, guys. So this was eight cups of shredded cabbage. You could buy the um, cabbage that's in the little bag, uh, like the mix of coleslaw mix if you want to, but I'm using fresh cabbage today. Um, and now I'm going to add in the toasted ramen and the almonds. I'm going to put in all of this dressing. And like I said, it's going to look like a lot of dressing, but as it sits in the fridge, it's going to soak all of this up. So every little bit of this just has that really yummy, soy saucy, toasted sesame flavor. Jessica's favorite summer side is lemon shrimp pasta. Thank you for Ooh, commenting, Jessica. Yum. That sounds really good. That sounds really good. Have you checked out my shrimp scampi skewers? Because that's been like my dish of the summer. Yeah. I'll post that recipe for you a little bit later. Those are really yummy. They're so good. Um, so now we have that all mixed up. I'm just going to chop up some scallions and we're going to throw that into our coleslaw. Um, and like I said, that just sits in the fridge overnight. So there's very little cooking involved. Yeah. I love how like basically the fridge does the cooking for you. I love that. Which is really Keep that kitchen really cool. Fun. Yeah. Um, on Monday, speaking of keep, keeping the kitchen cool, yes. um, on Monday we're going to make some no-cook suppers, yeah. right? Which we is were a, working on those today and we kind of blew our minds with a few things we were thinking about, so I'm excited <laughs> to share them with you on Monday. Rihanna, hi Rihanna, our good friend Rihanna. Hello um, Rihanna. She commented and she said that she'd love to see a whole show about summer fruits and veggies. Oh. Okay. That's a great idea. That's a great idea, Rihanna. We can, we can make that work. We'll see what we come up with. Uh, so I just added those scallions down into there, and now you just pop some plastic wrap over the top of this. You let it sit in the fridge overnight. Mm. I have one back here that's already done, and see how Look it kind of shrinks pretty. down like that? And it's beautiful, and there's tons of it, too. This mm. is great for a party. Um, do you want to taste it? Yeah, I would love to. I'm not going to lie, I have tasted it a few times before now. <laughs> but I would love an official bite. Yes, please. Ooh, thank you. Ooh, there you go. Mmm. I'm gonna try this. That is so good, Brent. And since you toast the noodles, they don't get like really soggy. They, they don't. stay like almost like an al dente pasta. I'm gonna say like ramen croutons or something. Mm -hmm. You know, they're like really a nice texture. They're like somewhere between cooked, yeah, al dente, somewhere between cooked and crunchy, but really, really yeah. good. That is so great, Grant. Thank you. Um, so this is our um, ramen noodle coleslaw. Nice. This recipe will be on the Facebook page later today. Mm. Um, but Jeanette, you're you're going to continue carving your watermelon. I'm going catch to us up going. on what you've done. I'm going to catch you guys up on what I've done. So um, you saw me scooping out all of the innards, and um, this is going to be watermelon margaritas next week, so come back for that. Um, so now you've got a nice open um, fruit bowl, which is what we were making for our fruit salad. Um, I took the metal spoon and I scooped out. You want to make sure when you're scooping not to scoop too far down. You want to scoop, you want to leave about like two inches so that when you're um, putting it out on your table for whatever entertaining you're doing, um, it's not leaking everywhere. 
So the melon baller is a very handy tool um, when watermelon carving. And um, I just took the small edge and what I did is I cut about maybe a, an inch, an inch and a half oh, up yeah. from the top and an up from the bottom. And it's I'm already gonna... started to look like a shark to you right? a little bit. Yeah. And all you do is scrape off the green skin to expose the white portion underneath it. Is that called a pith? The pith? It's the pith of a sure. lemon. Yeah. I don't know what it's called in a watermelon. Um, what's what kind of what breed of shark is this? this Tell is us a, more about the species. This is a uh, great white shark. Oh, yeah. And again, like I said, this whole idea kind of spawned from my love of a uh, shark week. Oh, cool. And <laughs> I was throwing a party one year, and I made this as my centerpiece. Um, and as have many of you, you guys have posted lots of pictures of uh, over the years of fun watermelon carvings that you guys have made that I've taught you. And that's always really fun to see those pictures. Um, let us know if you guys are going to make this this weekend because um, it's super easy. Yeah, it's super easy. And there's a, you have a ton of these um, carvings on the website, I too. do have plenty of carvings on the website. Uh, Martha posted and asked if cilantro would be good in the coleslaw. I think that would be really great. Be I would great, add yeah. cilantro, mint, um, pretty much anything like that. Yeah. Um, one thing I will tell you, though, it's better to add the herbs um, right before you serve it rather than letting them sit in the dressing overnight because they can kind of turn that's brown. A great, that's a great tip. Um, so if you want them to stay pretty and green, just add them right before you serve yep. it. Um, hello to Claudia from Cincinnati. Hi, Claudia. Watching, right? And Susan commented and said that she loves chicken macaroni Ooh, salad. That yeah, sounds yummy. I love macaroni salad. So, um, so do you want to show them how you carve the teeth? I'm going to go grab some ice so I can make our coffee. Oh, great. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So I am going to show you. Uh, I've started a little bit already. Uh, so now after I peel away about an inch, inch and a half of the skin on the outside, I'm going to use just a paring knife. And I just go just kind of in and out. Um, and all the little triangles that are gonna fall out and um, I'll never forget the first time I was making this on set with Rachel um, I, I used the words I'm not a sculptress and that has followed me since then <laughs> I'm still not a sculptress um, but you know when you think I've never looked a shark in the mouth and I hope I never have to but I'd imagine he doesn't have perfect teeth no because he's chilling in the I ocean he's eating seals there's no dentistry in the there ocean. there is no dentistry in the ocean so sharks um, don't wear braces again this is not something that you need to be uh, super precise with yeah um, when you're carving his teeth I love it. Uh, oh, yeah. That's good. And um, so it's funny that we're doing this today. And I have, I told you yesterday, if you were watching on Facebook Live, that I was going to share with you one of the more embarrassing moments of my life. And it's funny when everybody's like, oh, what's your most embarrassing moment? I will tell you. I was um, carving watermelons with Rachel on set. It was my second year. It was the second time I was making watermelons. It was my second time on television. I was super, super nervous. And um, I went, we were making porcupines. That, that carving's up on the website as well. We were carving porcupines. And... Mm -hmm. um, a porcupine or a hedgehog? We, we still couldn't decide. We still don't know. We have no idea. It was cute. I carved <laughs> the back. Spiky creature. I put lots of um, toothpicks on it. It was really cute. That's on the website. Um, and what happened was, I like, we went to start the segment. I was like, you know, Rachel makes you feel so comfortable when you're on camera. And then I was just, I don't know what happened. As the segment started, the cameras rolled. I picked up the knife. The knife hit the corner of my thumb and I cut my thumb. Oh, no. So, you know, in front of 125 of my closest audience friends. I immediately, like, I was like, all right, I have to get this done, but I'm also semi-panicking. So I remember getting to a spot, and if you go back and watch that segment, which I did the other day, um, I'm holding a towel to my hand the whole time as a secret <laughs> that I cut my finger. So, um, yeah, that's one of my more embarrassing stories. So hopefully there's going to be no bloodshed yes. today. I'll never forget, Rachel texted me later that night and made me feel so much better about it. I came in, I grabbed a Band-Aid, everything was good, we finished the segment, nobody was hurt. But I remember she texted me later that night to make me feel better because I was so embarrassed. Yeah. And she was like, Jeanette, the first day I ever did something on someone's set, uh, she was on Emerald set, and she set the set on fire, so maybe it's that's good luck true. in your yeah. career when you injure or hurt yourself on set. <laughs> so that is one of my more embarrassing that's watermelon story. stories. <laughs> Um, Lori asked, um, it's zucchini season, do we have any ideas? I think, are you actually using zucchini on, on Monday. Monday? I am, yeah. Yeah, so tune in on Monday, Jeanette's going to use some zucchini. I'm I actually am. using some um, fresh corn and fresh tomatoes, so if you're interested in summer produce, um, check that we out on Monday. We noodles a few weeks back, too. Oh, yeah. Um, a recipe really with like zucchini, you use a spiralizer and you make noodles out of them. Um, so like I said earlier, I think Jeanette and I's favorite side of all time is cocktails. Yay. So we're actually <laughs> going to make a really super easy, it's like a two-ingredient cocktail, mm. I guess three-ingredient cocktail. Um, and one of our biggest tips for entertaining is whenever you have people over and you don't feel like making lemonade, that's totally fine. But put it in a pitcher and say it's homemade because nobody's ever going to know. No one knows. And that then, looks homemade, right? Yeah, just add some <laughs> chopped lemons if to it. If he didn't tell you, you would have thought so it was lemon. Now, doesn't that look like homemade he lemonade? He was slaving all morning juicing those you lemons. You would think. You would think. But I wasn't. <laughs> 
Um, so now I'm just going to fill a glass halfway full um, of our homemade lemonade. And I'll top it off with a little bit of champagne or Prosecco. Mm -hmm. So this is a really simple, fresh summer cocktail. Um, it's only two ingredients, and it's super easy to make. Since you're not is working so hard over here, I thought, oh, really? I thought she needed a little Thank you, cocktail. Dear. Here you are. <laughs> cheers. Mm. And cheers to you guys. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Cheers to Clifford who commented, and he said that we should add pickled cabbage and asparagus to the potato salad. Mm. This really is yummy. so good, Grant. Clifford, that's actually a great tip because anytime I'm cooking, I just try to think of how many more ways I can add more vegetables to things. Because, you know, we're always, I mean, I'm very conscious, and I know people are about eating as many vegetables as they can, getting as many vegetables into their family. So that's a great tip because once it's all buried in those potatoes and the yummy dressing, you're not even going to be noticing that it's there's tons of vegetables in there. Yeah. This is so good, Graham. Yeah, really refreshing. Yummy. I mean, it's yeah. super, super simple. Mm -hmm. uh, what were we? We, we were playing with. We were playing things. with the name of it. Did we decide what we were going to call it? Oh yeah, it's like a mimosa, but with lemonade. Yeah. So it's a limosa. Mimosa. Only three <laughs> ingredients. Only three ingredient limosa. Love it. Um, so like I told you guys earlier. I'm going to make a pasta salad now. Mm. Um, so what I decided to do, I was thinking about summertime and things I like to eat. And somehow lemons come to mind when I think of summertime. And my mom loves lemon poppy flavored oh. anything. Hi, Pam. Hi, Pam. Oh, She's I love probably your mom. watching. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so I'm going to make a lemon poppy pasta salad. So I'm getting started here on the dressing. Um, I used one cup of full fat Greek yogurt. I just use those like individual ones that you buy at the store because then that way you don't have to measure anything at all. Okay. So one container of that. Um, a little bit of mayonnaise went down in there. And I'm going to add in some white pepper. Um, but you could absolutely use black pepper because what's the difference, right? It's pretty much the same thing. Same thing. Hi to Lisa from South Florida. Thanks for commenting Ooh. in. And Christina said that her eight-year-old and six-year-old are watching and they love the shark. Hi, Christina's eight-year-old and six-year-old. I hope you make this this weekend. It's super easy. I'm actually <laughs> almost done with it. Um, I just put in some dried dill. You could use fresh dill if you want, but I always use dried because I feel like whenever I buy dill, it comes in such a big bundle mm -hmm. and I don't need that much of it. And I'm like, what do, I, what do I do with You're all right. this dill? So I just use dried dill because it's, you know, the it same smells thing. really good too. Um, it smells so, ranchy. Yeah, it does. It does smell a little ranchy. Um, I added in some onion powder as well. And now I'm putting in a little bit of sugar because I want this dressing mm. to be kind of sweet because it is lemon poppy flavored. And I thought that should be a tiny bit sweet. I'm going to put in a little bit of salt. And then, of course, we need our lemon, right? So I'm going to add in the zest and the juice of a lemon. Mm. The reason we add in both is because the lemon zest has all of that yummy, like, lemony aroma, like the flavor of lemon. Mm, that's I love it. And then the, the essence. Yeah, the essence of so lemon. Good. And then the juice has that nice, um, you know, punch of acidity that we need so for the nice. dressing as well. So we add in both the juice and the zest because a lemon is actually, like, a two-ingredient thing. You get both the zest You're and right. the juice. So we might I as like well that. use it all, right? Um, so now I'm just going to juice our one lemon. Um, Tiffany said that she would add raspberries that were muddled into our drink. Ooh, and that, that would sounds, be really We had raspberries. I would love to do that right now, Tiffany. Yeah. And hi to Jen from Indiana. Thank you for commenting in and saying hello. Thanks for Thank watching. Thank you for watching. Um, and I don't know about you guys at home, but both Jeanette and I own a lemon squeezer yes, like we this. Do. It's one of my favorite kitchen tools because it makes juicing lemons it's so It's a wonderful easy. investment. Easy. It really is. Like, you don't think you're going to use it that much, but I actually end up using lemons more because I have this. Yeah, you're right. And I actually bought the lemon one, and it was kind of a twofer because I use it for limes, too. Yeah, totally. You don't you need the lemon. You use the lemon. Limes. Molly just asked, uh, commented and said, what's a good dairy-free pasta salad? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I mean, this one does have a lot of dairy in it because there's mayonnaise and Greek yogurt. Uh, but you can make like a vinegar-based pasta salad. I know there's a lot of um, pasta salads out there that are vinegar-based. Uh, one of the more popular ones is like a the bottled Italian dressing. Oh, yeah. Put that on, pasta set, mm, on top yummy. of pasta. Totally. You can make it, your, make it yourself. Yeah. Um, so that's all we add to this. I'm going to grab our hot pasta. Awesome. I always add the pasta in while it's hot because that way as it sits in the fridge, it kind of soaks up all of that. Let me help you out here. Thank you. Oh, there it is. <laughs> this will help. As it sits in the fridge, since it's hot, it's going to soak up all of that dressing. And it mm. looks like a lot of dressing, but like I said with the coleslaw, it's going to soak it all up as it sits in the fridge. So then you let that sit in the fridge overnight. Oh, I almost forgot our most important ingredient, the poppy the seeds. Poppy. I was looking at it. I was like, it looks so different. It needs and the poppies. this recipe and all four of our salad recipes are going to be up on the Facebook page a little bit later. So make sure you come back and check out those. And I have one back here that's mm. already cool. With like 10 pieces of pasta missing because I've yeah, been snacking. we've also been snacking on so this. So good. Look how pretty that is. Thank you. And then I just kind of garnish it with a little bit of chai. Love it. Because um, it just looks prettier that way, I think. Mm. And there it is. That's our lemon poppy pasta salad. It's so pretty, Grant. I really love that. 
Are we just digging in? I think we're just going to dig in. We're doing it. Mmm. And the poppy fun. seeds are so nice because it's like a little burst of that yummy flavor and mm -hmm. they get stuck in that swirly pasta. Oh yeah, totally. We so, use the rotini, that swirly pasta, so, so nice. all the dressing gets in there. Mm. I might make that this weekend. It's really it good. It tastes a little ranchy too, right? Yeah. It's like lemon poppy mm. ranch. Who doesn't almost. love ranch? Totally. I love ranch. Love it. All right. Hi to Kristen from Wisconsin. Thank you for writing in. And Ashley is asking what herb could you use instead of dill if you didn't like it? Um, You can just skip the dill, but you can pretty much use anything. I think basil would be really great in basil that. Basil would be great. Um, a little parsley, mm, pretty much anything. Any herbs. Or none of them at all. Yeah, you could, omit, you could omit that. <laughs> um, I'm going to show you guys the finishing touches on my watermelon. I don't know if you were kind of watching while Grant was making his pasta salad, but this guy's looking like he's coming alive, Ooh, right? he looks like a shark. Is it scary if I hold him up to the camera? Yeah, he is. He's, <laughs> he's dripping. All over the Actually, so one of my tips is that um, when you're getting to the ending stages of it, put it on the board that you're going to serve it on. So if it's going to be the centerpiece for a party or something, build, start building it on here so that you're not transferring the wet, soggy watermelon oh, yeah, everywhere. So I like to put it on. Sometimes I put a little paper towel underneath it too. That always holds it still. Yeah. Um, so what I did here, I'll show you. I punched with the, with the um, melon baller. I punched two eye holes on the mm -hmm. sides of his head. Um, and I take half a toothpick and I put a little um, grape on it. And I just stick his eye right in there. Ooh, yummy. Ooh, oh, there he goes. <laughs> He's a one eyed shark. Here, I put that one incorrectly. And um, I took the from the base when I cut that bottom quarter of, the, of it off, I cut a little um, triangle out of it. And that is his dorsal fin. Ooh, and I just took two, th fin. two toothpicks. Is that what it's called? A dorsal fin. Hmm. Yeah. I, I think so. I <laughs> so yeah, so I um I just stuck that in the top of his head uh, with um, some toothpicks, he looks and now weird. for the uh, grand finale, Grant, if you'd like to help me, totally, we're gonna. Um, people are still commenting and tell us their favorite. Oh wow, um, I know. I think, sides. I think we hit a we hit a, a chord here. People are into their summer sides. Uh, but Sarah likes to make zucchini casserole. Ooh, that's, that's a that's great use up for zucchini too. We were yeah. talking about how everybody has so much zucchini right now in their gardens. It's a great use up. Uh oh. Oh, it's. So it's a shark fun. attack. I know. So isn't this a really fun, creative way to serve your <laughs> your fruit salad? Um, you just kind of stick a stick a spoon in him, and uh, and he's this ready to fun. go. He's this so is cute. fun, right? Thank yeah. you, Grant. I know. And thanks for still being enthusiastic, because over the years you have seen me carve maybe no, 20, 20 to 30 of these guys. <laughs> I have, I've never been so hands-on with them before. And now I understand why you like it so much. I do. I know. This I know. Is fun. We're already working up what's coming for the next Fourth of July. Yeah. I got I got some ideas, guys. Um, John says that he would love to see Rachel's seven layer dip from her 30 minute meals. Ooh, we'll have to yummy. find that recipe. Yeah. Rachel's got so many wonderful recipes on the internet. She does. Um, we'll, we'll look for that one. Um, and that's, that's that guys. This is him. You saw it live. Yeah. I'm sweating a little bit. But Comment below and tell us what you think we should name this shark. Because oh, Jeanette just made a shark and it needs a name, he right? He needs a name. What should we name him? Um, all right. So we're going to recap on our summer, our upgraded summer sides. Yeah. Um, I started it out with my um, potato salad salad, which um, I, I yeah, thank you. Um, I never made, never made it to the bowl. I was a little anxious about the shark. Um, so now that is just, um, you know, some potatoes and some ni nice dressing. I tossed it very at the end with um, some fresh arugula, and that makes it a potato salad salad. So a little bit healthier right there. Grant made this awesome ramen Ooh. coleslaw, yeah, which is delicious, and I'm going to continue eating. Um, then, uh, we, the, 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 not, I'm not gonna say the grand finale, but, uh, our fruit man, who doesn't have a name yet, um, <laughs> our fruit shark, um, which is one of the first watermelon carvings I ever made on the show, um, is good to go. And, um, oh wait, Finny, Finny the shark. Finny the shark. That's a great name, guys. Thank you. Finny so you guys shark. can say hello to Finny. Hey, Finny. Hey, Finny. Spewing out of his mouth. <laughs> and then we finished up with this um, lemon poppy pasta mm. salad. And all these recipes are going to be on the Facebook page later today. They are. Right? And like we said before, um, all of these recipes are going to be on the Facebook page later today. We are going to be back on Monday um, with two brand new no cook suppers that yeah. we've been thinking up. So make sure to join us then. And don't forget, if you like what you saw today, make sure to like, comment, share, and cook. We'll see you guys on Monday. Have a great weekend. I'm going to eat his eyeball. Bye. Oh. <laughs> it kind of looks so good right now. Mm-hmm.